Hey, this is Jared Dees from the religionteacher.com. This year is going to be a different kind of year, and many parishes and schools are offering a virtual catechesis option. And so I want to talk about three C's that I think will help guide us in doing successful virtual catechesis. I don't want to endorse a certain model or curriculum or program, but I do want to suggest that these three C's, these three ways of focusing the way that we do catechesis is going to lead to success. What are parents challenged with as they're doing at-home catechesis, as they're doing catechesis maybe virtually, online, is that they are overwhelmed. So what these three C's are going to do are help you overcome overwhelm with parents. As you're working with families, how do you help them not be so overwhelmed in a very overwhelming kind of life that we're living in? The first C is consistent. Catechesis has to be cons consistent to be successful. That means keeping things simple. That means being very clear about your uh, what you're asking families to do on a weekly basis. And I would suggest, you know, if, if you're used to lesson planning in class, how do you make it as simple as possible what, what they're doing at home? Maybe three R's. Read, reflect, and respond. Read doesn't have to be just reading a textbook, although it might be. Read could be watching a video. It could be reading the gospel readings for the week. And then you're asking families at home or virtually as a class to do a, some kind of a reflection that they're going to think about what they've read. They're going to think about what they've watched. They're going to respond in prayer and showing something that they've learned. So the activities that you're suggesting they do at home are going to be some ways of reflecting personally because ultimately in catechesis we're not just giving information we're leading kids to an encounter with Christ so we need to stress not just the education or the information that we're teaching in catechesis but reflection but personal meditation and then a response at home in prayer especially as a family what a great opportunity that presents to us in a unique way this year doing virtual catechesis at home so be consistent with what you're suggesting families do at home in virtual catechesis make the, the structure of what you're presenting very consistent and simple so that you don't overwhelm families you know parents especially they don't necessarily feel equipped to be able to teach the Catholic faith so let's not overwhelm them with a lot of different things. Let's keep it very, very simple. The sources of the reading, the videos that they're watching, some type of a reflection and a response. The activities that lead to a reflection and a response. Okay. The second key, the second C is connection. Catechesis has to be keeping people connected. It has to be fostering a community between you and parents, email, text, phone call, even visits to home to make that face-to-face -face relationship, it's going to be critical this year because families are feeling disconnected from the church. So catechist DREs need to be that bridge between the church and the home. You need to have connections between you and the student. And if possible, the students connected to students. So whatever tools you're using, whether it's you know, Google, whether it's Zoom, whether it's Flipgrid, there's all kinds of tools, digital tools out there to help foster those connections between you and the parents. And also, if you're doing some kind of a classroom setting, given the opportunity for you to connect personally with the kids, with the students, and even for the kids to connect with each other, doing something that they can virtually share ideas, virtually connect with other people, so they're, you're building that community in a less than ideal way virtually. So keep it consistent. Foster some connections between you and the, the home. And then finally, for virtual catechesis, what can be successful is as a Catholic church, we kind of have this secret weapon, which is the calendar. That, like I said, families are feeling more and more disconnected to the church. They haven't gone to Mass very much, or if, if at all, this year because of the pandemic. So how do we create some unity create some ideas or focus on, on ideas as a church on a week by week, week, monthly basis. What can we do on a weekly basis? Well, that's pretty easy, right? We've got the readings. 
focus on the Gospels, focus on the Sunday readings, you know, make that a, a cornerstone of the catechesis that you're doing, because even if they're not going to Mass because of, of quarantine, they can at least connect with the Gospel, the, the, the Word of God, God's presence in the written Word. You can also focus on the saints or the feast days throughout the year. So highlighting the church's liturgical year, and each week there's all kinds of things going on, being able to communicate with families about how we can unite around those feast days. And then on a monthly basis, you know, just think about what are the seasons that's the focus of this time of year, whether it's ordinary time, Advent, Christmas, Lent, Easter, highlighting those liturgical seasons so that you can connect with families in that way and giving them activities and habits to do at, at home. So those are three C's, consistency, connection, and calendar, making sure that we're making virtual catechesis successful this year. Not overwhelming families, but giving them some tools to be able to do catechesis at home and lead them into an encounter with Christ on a daily basis, individually as kids, but also what a great opportunity to bridge that gap with families, to be able to do catechesis together, to be able to connect with the parish in a way that's going to lead everyone in that relationship with God. Go make disciples. God bless.